Hey there once again YouTube. Now, I just got back home from the Woodland Park Zoo in Seattle, and I must ask you, how come every time I go somewhere something interesting happens? I swear to God, every time I go to Mount Rainier or Mount St. Helens or even the Woodland Park Zoo or wherever, and I'm there for hours, something seismically or volcanically interesting always happens. I swear to God, it always happens like that. So, to start off, we did see a magnitude 3.3, which was felt by some people at 12 kilometers in depth in Canada, and that was at 12.12 UTC, 29th, August 29th, 2019. And also, on August 29th, 2019, at 0.50 UTC, there was a 4.1 in Poland at 5 kilometers in depth. Now, I'm not going to show those right now because I do have limited time. However, I want to talk about two things just real quick. Sorry if my computer's lagging a little bit. Now I'm going to talk about in this post, or excuse me, in this video, I'm going to talk about the Rapid Fire Swarm, which is the largest at Yellowstone since the December 31st, 2018 Rapid Fire Swarm, as you'll see in just a minute. But I want to start with this right here, a strong magnitude 6.3 at 5.4 kilometers in depth, a shallow depth struck off the coast of Oregon about 200 kilometers west of the Cascadia subduction zone, did not strike on the subduction zone itself, but did strike on the Blanco fracture zone, which I have talked about a few times in the past. Now, it was a strong earthquake, so we should see some felt reports. I have not checked the event page yet. We're going to take a look at that right now. Let's see how many people felt. It shouldn't be too many, though, because it was off the coast. Let's see here. Wow. That's a good people. Almost 700 people reported to you. And these are just the people that reported feeling it. Many more people could have felt this earthquake. 6.3 off the coast of Oregon along the Blanco Fracture Zone saw almost 700 Did You Feel It reports. That's a lot, guys. It was a strike-slip earthquake. Typical strike-slip event. And they do have a tectonic summary here. The 6.3 off the coast of Oregon occurred as the result of strike slip faulting along the Blanco Fracture Zone, a transformed fault marking the boundary between the Pacific Plate to the southwest and the Juan de Fuca Plate to the northeast. Moment tensor solutions show faulting occurred as a result of slip on a steeply dipping fault. Blah, 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 blah. You guys can come to the event page here if you want to read that. I'm a little short on time today, but let's look at the seismic data for this event real quick. Just from the closest seismic station, which we'll see what it is right here. Let's go to phases. Go on, buddy. Okay. Quick arrival time once. And we see, as usual, for the earthquakes along the Blanco Fracture Zone, KEB in the NC network is the closest seismic station available. Let's take a look at that in the seismic program swarm right now. Here you have data obtained from seismic station KEB in the NC network, which is on the southwestern coast of Oregon. And down here we do see the magnitude 6.3, which originally was 6.4. Very shallow at 5.4 kilometers in depth. Very strange PNS wave arrivals on this earthquake, guys. This is unfiltered, and this is a broadband station showing very low frequencies, very strong lower frequencies for this event. Let me turn on a 1 hertz high pass filter just real quick. 1 hertz high pass to the 8th power. Okay, so zooming out, this is the magnitude 6.3. Here's the P wave arrival. And here's the S wave arrival. And all the way down here, we do see continued surface waves for quite a while. Let's go to the spectrogram real quick. Let's see if there are any aftershocks. Again, here's the magnitude 6.3 off the coast of Oregon. So let's see if there are any aftershocks at all. Not seeing much, guys. Not seeing much. Let's see. That's definitely not an earthquake. Going forward. Nope. That, those are not earthquakes, that's for sure. Let's see, any aftershocks? Oh, we do have an aftershock right here. I'm going to say maybe magnitude 3.5 to 4.0 along the Blanco Fracture Zone. Likely associated to the area adjusting from this earthquake. Here's a smaller event, maybe magnitude 3.0 to 3.5. Aftershock activity for this 6.3 is pretty low, so... I don't know, guys. We could see more activity. This area is highly seismically active, so wouldn't be surprised if we saw another 6 here in the next year or so, even sooner, possibly. You never know. And looking forward, still not seeing many aftershocks. Maybe a few tiny ones here and there, but nothing major. Now, I want to go take a look at the rapid-fire earthquake swarm at Yellowstone. Here we are at isthisthingon.org, and first off, you can see the blatant magnitude 6.3 teleseismic signature right here, right there. Very strong earthquake, and it should show on stations basically all across the world, should show this event at least in some way, shape, or form. 
However, hours later, and just recently actually, just in the past few hours, there was a very strong rapid fire swarm. Let's go to Borehole 944, right down here on the southern tip of West Thumb Lake in Yellowstone. B944, we do see the rapid fire swarm right down here. Again, it was the strongest rapid fire swarm to hit Yellowstone since the December 31st, 2018 rapid fire swarm near Yellowstone Lake, just to the north northeast of Yellowstone Lake. But this one occurred far to the south of West Thumb Lake. And let's see. Let's go to the earthquake page, shall we? As we see here, USGS is only reporting four earthquakes. And as you will blatantly see in the seismic data, there are many, many, many than just four earthquakes. However, however, let's see. Today is Thursday, so they should be here. Check back every once in a while. Now, I'm going to create an analysis page on my website for this earthquake swarm, which is what I always do whenever one of these rapid fire swarms occurs, especially ones of this magnitude. They're only really reporting the four largest events, and I do agree the largest event was probably around 2.7 to 2.8, and they were reporting a 2.2, 4.3 kilometers in depth, 2.2 3.9, and a 1.6 at 4 kilometers. The largest was the most shallow, and let's click here, and they did say that, let's see, how many people were reported feeling this event? Let's check. One person did feel this event. Now, if this was a highly populated area, that number would probably be much higher. But then again, it's only a shallow 2.7, so not too many people would feel 2.7, but it depends on where you're at in the park, just saying. Probably some visitors did feel this earthquake. Now, this earthquake, again, was part of a large rapid-fire swarm, the largest since December 30, 31st, 2018, which was New Year's Eve of 2018. And actually, you can find the plots to the 2018 New Year's Eve earthquake swarm near uh, Yellowstone Lake, near the northern tip of it, on my website. If you go to Seismic Blogs, go to Yellowstone, Yellowstone Super Volcano, excuse me. However, I have so many posts on here, you will have to go to the archives page and click January 2019, all the way down here, which will have the one from December 2018 on it. Okay, so let's take a close look. Now, again, they said one person reported feeling the magnitude 2.7, which was the largest earthquake within this earthquake swarm itself. Again, it's been quite a while, almost about, about three quarters of a year since Yellowstone has experienced an earthquake swarm like this. Of course, as we see, Borehole 944 in the PB network is the closest seismic station to detect this earthquake swarm. Let's take a look at that in the seismic program swarm. Here we are in the seismic program swarm with the most recent data taken from Borehole 944 in the PB network. Short period channel, so we do not need a filter really much at all right now. To start off, we do see the tail seismic signature from the magnitude 6.3. For some reason, it does not look as strong on here, but 1511 UTC was the time that the teleseismic signature started to come in on the seismic stations in the Yellowstone National Park area. And then many hours later, you can tell we did have a very strong rapid fire swarm, which I'm going to say started right about here. A lot of the events were so occurring in such quick su succession that they sometimes would blend to create a tremor like event. It's not necessarily tremor. I guess it could be considered that to some people. But it's more along the lines of a rapid fire swarm, which we have seen before at Yellowstone. My favorite one is probably the July 5th, 2018 one, and also the one that occurred on April 11th, 2018 as well. Those are some, some of the biggest rapid fire swarms that I've ever seen for Yellowstone. And this is almost on par with some of those. Now, <clears throat> it is very possible in the coming 24 hours that we could see another spurt of activity very similar to this. For example, on April 11th, 2018, we did see earthquakes swarming very similar to this. Very rapid succession, a lot of earthquakes, uh, hundreds of earthquakes within a very short period of time. A lot of them were small. None of them probably would, would have been felt except the largest event. And then there was calm for about 12 to 15 hours. And then, all of a sudden, we saw an even bigger swarm occur after that. That was another rapid fire swarm. So basically two rapid fire swarms and one day in April 11th, 2018. And so going forward, we see multiple events starting out, likely 1.8 or so starting out. And so many earthquakes and some type of weird background activity. Not sure what that is. It's very weak. Very possible there's some type of tremor related to this earthquake swarm, but I don't know for sure. You can tell it starts back up right about, let's see, what is that? Sorry, guys, got to pan down a little bit. Starts back out at about 2128 UTC and then gets pretty strong for a while. This is probably the strongest sequence of the entire swarm for today. Right here. 
Very, very strong, guys. Strong Earthquake Swarm. At least strong for what Yellowstone has seen recently. And you can tell there are a lot of even teeny tiny microquakes just occurring so fast. I mean, it'd, it'd be impossible to count these all. However, on my analysis page on my website, which I'll let you guys know about when it's up, I will try my best to count all of these earthquakes from the closest seismic station. I will try my best, guys. I will try my best. Going forward. Constant activity. Constant, constant, constant. Now, this is definitely not just tectonic in origin. Rapid fire swarms with these type of characteristics are sort of, they're, they're related to fluid flow. If you get my drift. Hydrothermal or magma, I don't know. But it's definitely related to some type of movement of fluid below the crust. And notice that it is very rapid fire in this sequence, guys. Very rapid succession. I mean, look at this. Just within, what, 24 to 48. With, within less than 30 seconds, we see, what, about four events. Not too big, but that's that, that's pretty fast, guys. That's pretty fast. Keep going forward. You see it does continue. And it keeps continuing. It doesn't stop. It's not stopping. It's still going, guys. Woohoo! Man. But the past few hours it has calmed down. But this was definitely a shock. Now, oh, oh, whoops. Now, when I was at the Woodland Park Zoo when we were coming home, I uh, looked at my phone. I was like, oh, my God, we got to get home now. There's an earthquake storm at Yellowstone. Woo! Some people might not be excited about earthquake swarms at Yellowstone, but I love monitoring these rapid fire swarms. They're my most favorite seismicity to monitor. Notice that these are definitely earthquakes. There's one, two, three, and four, but they occur in such close rapid succession, they do blend almost to create a tremor like event. And we do see another event right here, likely a 2.5 or so. Let's see, 22, 24, let's see. Oh, nope, this was the largest event of the swarm. The 2.7 is this event right here. So this was the largest earthquake of the entire swarm. Let's see what the amplitude went up to. I'm going to say... It's about 72,000. 72, now let's go up here, because I swear there was a larger event right here. Okay, this goes up to 100,000 amplitude count. And that was at about 2133 UTC. Let's go back to 2133 UTC and see if they have reported the largest event of the swarm. 2133 UTC? No, they are not. Okay. So this magnitude 2.7 at 2 kilometers in depth is not the largest event. They have not yet reported the largest event, which hopefully they will soon. Sometimes I see some of these rapid fire swarms being reported on. Even earthquakes are reported two or three days after the swarm has ended. So just keep an eye on the USGS Earthquake website and my analysis page, which I will put on my Yellowstone blog. Just keep an eye out for that analysis page. Likely will be up tomorrow morning or tomorrow night. So again, just keep an eye out for that. I'll try to get it out quick to you guys. But again, the largest event of the entire swarm occurred right here at 2133 UTC. Very interesting rapid fire swarm, guys. Let's zoom out as much as we can. Try to get a good picture of the entire swarm. Look at all of those earthquakes, guys. Look at that. So this isn't the entire, entire swarm, but here's a good chunk of it right here. Look at that on the spectrogram. Look at that. Woo-wee! That, those are a lot of earthquakes. Definitely going to be over 100. I'm, I'm saying that right. There's definitely going to be well over 100 microquakes. And not all of these were microquakes, guys. Remember, a microquake is a magnitude 2.0 or less, basically. Basically, it, it, there's a little room for debate on that one right there. But that's it for right now. Let's see if anything has occurred while I've been recording. Uh, not much, just a few small quakes here and there in the past hour or so, but not too, too much. So that's it for right now, guys. Again, keep an eye out for my analysis page coming soon on that swarm. God bless, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. See you later.